Hello everyone, I'm Chester44, also known as Fly, and welcome to this Let's Play of Horizon Zero Dawn. Last episode, we went and helped Erend try to figure out what happened at the ambush site that his sister died in, only to find that the ambush site was fabricated. The people were dragged over there from this location, Dimmed Bones, where it seems not Shadow Karja, but other Osirim did something that stunned them with some new weapon, then potentially didn't actually give back Ursa as a dead body, but instead some other dead body that was disguised as Ursa. Very curious. We're going to go turn in the rest of the, uh, anything, all the collectibles that we've had before we go speak with him to see if he can for certain identify whether it's Ursa or not. Mm, yes. Yes, yes. Creep. So I'm going to quickly do that. Okay, we have Palace's reward box too. Boom. There's still one more I will uh, leave you to the uh, vessel mm, that we yeah. need to get, but that's for the other uh, quest. Okay. You look capable. Y you might do. Come yes, here. Yes, if you will. Hush. I'll come back to you at some other point. Let's see. Let your guard down. Over this way, I think. Yes, you. Back from the wild. Yes, you I think we can do the third reward box. That's the last one. Come on back if you've found any Banuk rel And the flowers. In the wilds, Outlander? Up in this direction. Move along. Is it you? you? No. Oh, I missed, actually. Ah, over here. Yes, I remember it was this fancy guy. Ah, you're back. Yes, I'd like to trade. Reward box one, reward box two. There we go. Till we meet again. A moment of your time. And now let's open up these boxes. Mod boxes. A lot of mod boxes. Holy crap. Uh, how is... We, we need to sell some of these mods, but let's open up these boxes. Twenty! We used up twenty mods in that! Alright, let's go through all of our crafting and see what can be improved. We'll start with our bow, where we have a damage coil. Don't have anything better. We've got a handling coil. One we've got is better. And a fire coil, 28 fire, 9 handling. We can do 40 fire, 10 damage. Which actually I like. We lose a little bit of a hand of handling, but that's fine. Okay. Next we have. Let's see. Shadow Trip Caster. We've already got Shadow. We've already got that coil. Shock coil. We've got 40, 45, 29 fire. 40 fire and 14 shock. But I have a better idea. The shadow sling. Yes, that would be good for 40 fire and 14 shock. We've got 43 freeze. Nothing better. 41 shock. Nothing better. Okay. The Shadow Tripcaster. Can we improve the fire? We're at 29. We cannot. Shock damage is fine. Shadow Sling. We're all at good. The Rope Caster. 42, 41, 40. 40 tear, 30 handling. That's better. Good. The Lodge Warbow. We got 43 Fuse, 38 shock. And I grabbed a Corruption Coil. Don't have anything better. And the Shadow Rattler. 28-9 Handling, Shock Freeze. Okay, the rest of these... Lodge Blast Sling. 49 Handling, I didn't even realize. Hold on, hold on. Oh yeah, you're fine, okay. Yeah, a 49 handling. Holy crap. Um, 
Sure, all right. So we have something else. Give it the 49 handling. Why not? That, that would actually help. The rest of those, I think, were fine. So we got a lot of stuff that we can sell. Oh, uh, what about here? We have... Let's see. We've got a ste stealth weave. Just 6% stealth, which is what I already have, plus other things. Resist ranged attacks? Can be pretty good. Currently, it's resist range, corruption, and melee. Uh, I like having the resist range. Yeah, there's some decent things here, but... Yeah, I think we'll stick with what we have. Okay. Now, if you don't mind, Kudiv, I can sell things to you. I am always and I would very much like to. Let's see, what can I sell here? Mark that to sell. Any eyes? Yes, a few of those. Some of the fox bones. Sell those, 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 those. I guess I'll hold on to that for now. And those. That helps. And as for mods, I think I can sell most of the things that are green. Yeah, in general, if it's green, I can sell it, because I got a lot of blue things. Honestly, I can sell this too. I have a... No, oh, hold on to it for now. Several of these things I've actually got much better in purple. So I can sell more of these. Yeah, some of these are really good. These shocks I can sell. Let's see. I think I'll leave that for now. All right. I look Farewell. To Thank Everyone you. Needs... Now, Flash of color in the light. let's Come. go speak let's with uh, with the guy. We have so many metal shards right now. We actually haven't been to the Palace of the Sun yet. Blameless Marad. Greetings, Aloy. I am known as Blameless Marad. Please come with me. You're needed for an important consultation. What do you mean? Where's Erend? He's inside, attending the Sun King. Where we should be, without further delay. Follow me, please. Okay, then. All of these people are here to see the Sun King. Yes, and each has come to ask a favor of him. Unpleasant, but that's politics. The Sun King is eager to meet you. The machine tailor with a curious eye for detail. It's all very intriguing. I'm not here to intrigue you. Too late. Ooh. And it is becoming daytime. Well, they're not pleased, but I have reason to be here. This is an impressive house. Ignore them. Nobles are like children who whine when they don't get a second helping of dessert. A bit. What's the Sun King like? The most important thing is what he isn't like. His father. I think you'll find him to be a reasonable man. An elevator? Oh no. Aloy of the Nora. She who sees the unseen. Welcome. It would seem you have done me a great service. Errand, tell her what you found. I checked Ursa's tomb. You were right, Aloy. The body is missing a scar below her right knee. I gave it to Ursa when we were kids, fighting over a toy sword. If the body is not Ursa's, then we must assume she is still alive. And I will not abandon her. We only know she was taken, not who took her. I can help with that. Ursa has an enemy among the Osseron. 
a warlord named Durval. Impossible. Every clan in the claim has been hunting for him since the liberation. He has to be dead by now. No other Osoram had the motive and ingenuity to lure Ursa into this trap. I expect to find him lurking somewhere near the border. I've already sent an agent to investigate. He'll be waiting for word from us at the marketplace in Pitchcliff. I can't move troops to the border without provoking the Osoram. But I could send a few vanguardsmen. And perhaps an exceptionally gifted Nora as well. Errant, Murad. Let me discuss it with her privately. As you wish. Oh, son. I hate to impose further after all you've done, but this is a matter of great importance to me. So, you and Ursa? It sounds like Ursa means a lot to you. Without her Asaram vanguard, I would not have been able to liberate Meridian and end my father's brutal reign. Since then, it has been difficult to maintain peace between our tribes. But Ursa has a way of making her people see reason. Mm. So you see, I need her back at my side. And quickly. Tell me of Durval. Who is Durval, exactly? To understand Durval, you must first understand my father. He truly thought of himself as a sun god. His mind was broken. He believed that blood sacrifice would solve, well, everything. So he raided the other tribes for victims, especially the Asaran. I've heard this story. Durval fought back. He crafted powerful weapons and rallied his people. My father responded with the ultimate cruelty. He captured Durval's wife and daughter and sacrificed them in the Sun Ring. Why kidnap Ursa, though? So, why would Durval go to so much trouble to kidnap Ursa? He felt she betrayed him. She fought by his side until she realized he planned to raise Meridian and butcher its people. Ooh. And she came to me. Together, we stopped him and liberated the city from my father. Durval has spent every moment since trying to get revenge. Mostly on the other Asaram who fought with us. He made so many powerful enemies. I thought we'd seen the last of him. I was wrong. I have questions about the Karja Sundom. I'd like to ask you something about the Sundom and its politics. By all means. Tell me about becoming the Sun King. They call you a Sun God who killed his own father in order to unite the tribes in harmony. Is any of it true? They say you can see the invisible, split an arrow at 50 paces, and tame machines at a glance. How much of that is true? Some. It's not too far off. Well, I would like to unite the tribes in harmony, but you saw how many courtiers I have to deal with first. Maybe next week. <laughs> Tell me of your palace. It's quite impressive. Quite a place you've got here. You can almost see the little people below the mesa. You don't approve? Well, I have a secret for you. Neither do I. But we must be patient. Change won't come in a single sunrise. But will it happen at all, while men live in palaces? It might. Eventually. If people like you help me bring it about. So tell me of Karja and Osaram. Your politics seem very complicated. The Osaram are friends, but enemies too. I couldn't have liberated Meridian without the help of Ursa and her Osaram freebooters. Many of them have settled here. But the Eldermen of the Osaram clans and the claim have become jealous of their success. So have many Karja nobles. It's a volatile situation. Especially given the fact that my father raided the Asaram for years. Ursa helps keep the peace. Promising a future based on mutual gain. But some, like Durval, will never let go of their venom. And tell me of the Shadow Karja. What can you tell me about the Shadow Karja? What do they have to do with Ursa? They are remnants of my father's regime holding out at the fortress of Sunfall to the west. Like him, they care only for domination. 
and seek to draw upon the power of the sun by spilling blood in its name. Since Ursa helped me take this city from them, they were perfect scapegoats. Durval knew this, of course, and planned it well. Hmm. All right. Well, time is short. I need to get going. I know. Well, they say kings should never beg. But please, help me find Ursa. Who of says course. that? Well, Murad, for one. Don't hesitate to ask him or Aaron if you have further questions. Of course. And I will speak with them. Oh, there's something here to investigate. Founding of Meridian. Sure, let's take a look here. We are Karja. In us is the blood of those led by Araman from, from persecution and pursuit so long ago. Out of the far savage east we came, guardians of a treasure greater than land or metal. The leaves of the old ones. Araman found the leaves in a ruin, picked out by a beam of sunlight, and he recognized at once their importance. Within was etched the first teachings of how to observe the sun, to recognize its guidance, and to understand the place of man. From out of the leaves came the first glyphs, the first writing, so our knowledge could last longer than voices. But when our forefathers offered to share this gift, they were driven out by those they had once called tribesfolk. These ones feared to have the light of knowledge brought to bear on their ignorance, or were jealous of its power. And so began the long wandering of our people, trusting only that the sun would guide them and deliver them from the barbarian tribes. The path was hard and marked by the stones of families who fell along the wayside, even Araman's own. The persecution was unceasing, from those without purpose, only the desire to debase and destroy. But the faith of the Karja was rewarded with a distant vision. A tower, like a solid ray of the sun holding on the horizon, flashing. Even as their enemies descended upon them, Araman followed the flight of the Glint Hawks, leading his people through looming canyons and teeming jungles. Again they saw the tower, so close now it seemed to reach the very sun itself, and they saw that the Glint Hawks perched upon it. Beheld in the light of the sun, the tower, the spire, cast its long shadow upon the mesa across the verdant valley. Araman knew he had found a haven for, this, for the tribe, as this was a place shunned by those without his faith, who cowered from the magnificence of the spire or the shining feathers of the glint hawk. He named this place Meridian, from a passage in the leaves, and the tribe settled in the protection of the great mesa. They found the site was blessed in every respect, carving their cliff houses from the bounteous resources, and in time from the red rock of the mesa itself, crowning it with the first columns of the City of the Sun. Truly, the sun gave much to the descendants of our forefathers, granting Meridian great harvests and prosperity, and the bounds of the sundom for as far as its light touched. In time, seeing Meridian shielded us from the dark arrows and plots of our foes, other foreigners brought trade and tribute. Holy Meridian, without spire and sun, there would be no Meridian, but now and forevermore it stands as a monument to both, and the glory of Araman and the Founders is reflected anew in each Sun King of the Radiant Line and the noble houses of the Sun Court. So, all this came from some people who happened to find and keep a book one that, I guess, spoke of the sun, and maybe it was a science textbook or something? Ooh, there's another book over there. All right, uh, Errant. So, I thought Ursa was dead, and I thought Durval was dead. Dead doesn't seem to mean what it used to. Or maybe I'm just an ass. Or both. Whatever. All I know is that it's time to find my sister. And get some payback. Excuse me, sorry. I hope Murad's guy grabs us the lead. Ursa and Durval? Did Ursa ever tell you anything about Durval? Well, we were both under his command for a while. Sort of. Helped him recruit an army to take out the mad Sun King. But then he got real creepy with Ursa. Needless to say, she wasn't interested, but he wouldn't let it go. Ah! Not to mention the fact that we realized he wanted to murder every Karja. Not just the bad ones. 
Long story short, he's a grazer licking dumbbag. So, Sun King Avad? Avad seems committed to finding your sister. Yeah, those two got along. And some people say they shacked up, but I, I don't buy it. Seems a little skinny for her. <laughs> oh, okay, some bad images are forming in my head. Let's just focus on <laughs> finding her and kicking Durval's ass. Yeah, sounds fair enough. Time to go. I'd better go. Don't stand me up in Pitchcliff, okay? Ursa needs us. Of course. And as for you, blameless hey, Rod. How can I be of service? It's obvious that you're an advisor to the Sun King, but what is it you do exactly? Whatever is needed. Are you always so evasive? Vague. It depends. <laughs> you talk like me. Anyone who knows me may know how I can be very vague. <laughs> Sun King Avad? You were right about Avad. He seems genuine. He is the Sun King. I serve him the best I can. What else would you have me say? Huh. Did you serve the last one as best you could, too? Well, I served him to his enemies. It was the best I could do for the Sundom. Hmm. What did you do? Nothing I could be blamed for. Is that why you're called blameless? I don't know about you. Are you a spy? It sounds to me like you're a spy. There are many helpful voices in the Sundom and beyond. I like to think of myself as a good listener. So you're blameless. So why do they call you Blameless Maraud? Well, it depends on who you mean by they, and what they might wish to blame me for. <sighs> Talking to you is tiring. So they say. I've got my eye on you. Tell me about the Osram border. What will I find at the border? An outpost full of Osram. Most of whom want nothing to do with Durval. Still, he inspires great loyalty in those who fought with him against the last Sun King. He will not be caught alone. And don't forget, he is a master craftsman. Nothing delights him more than his dangerous toys. And Durval and Ursa? What makes you so sure Durval did this to Ursa? I don't care for sure or certain. I prefer likely or probably. How many Osirum are clever enough for this ruse? Capable of building the weapon you described? Who hate Ursa so... Well, I don't know how many Osirum... More than one? Not likely. Durval? Quite probably. Hmm. Even if people think he's dead? That is surely another reason to be suspicious of certain words. Alright, goodbye. I have goodbye. to go. Then you must. Still gonna keep my eye on you. Alright, looks like we have another book here. What are you? The Sun Kings. The Chronicle of the Sun Kings. The founder, Araman, who guided our forefathers from the shadows of the savage east into the faithless of into the fastness of the Mesa Valley. And who, reading the signs of sun and shadow both, delivered them to the holy to the site of Holy Meridian. The bounteous Amavad, who oversaw the clearing and sowing of the royal maize lands, so that none who walked in the sun's favor should go hungry again, who cut back the jewel to reclaim the rich estate lands for the first houses of the sun court. The far-seeing Sadahin, who expanded the sun's dominion to the north, south, and east, setting a gate at Bright Market Harbor, and who before the sun at its highest proclaimed these lands would be known as the Karja Sundom, so by the light it was good. Generous Juwadan, who stocked the metal markets with the spoils of his own trampler hunts, and who allowed trade from north and south, even permitting outlanders the gift of the counting glyphs, so they might understand more than simple barter. Zavarad, the Pilgrim Sun King, whose tower was raised to the top of the Ridge of Vales, and who crossed the great waters of the Daybreak, so the Sundom might extend ever further, and to honor their passage, had the great blazon arch raised on the far shores. 
bold Iriv, who saw the sun's passing into the west as a challenge, and forged after it with a great army to be pushed back three times at the great canyonlands that would be known as the Daunt, until on the fourth time his cohort broke through and were vanished in the lands beyond. Prudent Basadid, who had the mantle of his fallen brother thrust upon him suddenly, who ordered the construction of the fortress of Sunfall and the garrison at Blazon Arch, declaring the land beyond it the Forbidden West, where only the sun may go. Kuvadin the Returner, who strove to bring civilization to the savage east, but returned after many strenuous endeavors, saying it was no longer fit for the people of the sun, and called for the building of great towers and walls so, that th so this land might be observed safely. Ranan the Firebird, who saw the Sundom suffer unprovoked attack by the Tenacht Horde, and who, against the protests of his advisers, accompanied his army to confront them. Under the sun he claimed victory, though he was so greatly starred he wore his blazon helmet from that day. Nahasis, who was a hunter as much as a Sun King, and called for the proudest men of the noble houses to prove themselves in competition beneath the sun, and that those who felled the greatest machines would be situated as the first Sunhawk and Hawks of the Hunter's Lodge. The illuminated Marzid, who the sun visited with visions so vivid and grand, he commissioned many statues and frescoes of his visage in Meridian, and for his summer palace in Sunfall had the great citadel raised, where he remained painting until he took deathly ill from his own pigments. Hivas, elder brother of Marzid, who decreed each family with a suitable male child should submit that child in service of the Sundom's then depleted ranks, and had the artisans turn their attention from works of art to outfitting each soldier of the sun with the very finest armor, halberd, and bow. Jaran, who in his early years was a strong sun king, defending the Sundom from the encroachment of other tribes and the derangement of the machines, but who became greatly addled and ordered the spilling of much blood in the sun's name, threatening to bring a twilight time upon us. Avad the Liberator. And that's all we have so far. Okay. So. That's the Blazing Arch. That's Sunfall. They really do have a large territory. It seems everything to the south here. They've, made, they've reached as far east as this barrier, it seems. Not much further. they got the various things up in the north here. Hmm. Very interesting. This is an interesting palace, I will say. Ooh, where does this go? Huh. Ah, it leads to this area down here. I can't go any further. Okay, fair enough. I was just curious. Hmm. So, where does this task take us? Pitchcliff, which goes... Ah, we have been here before. We did take care of those other side missions up there in Pitchcliff. Could go there quite easily. Although, should we go now? Is what I'm kind of wondering. Or should we wait and do the other quest first? What level is this quest? Level 15. Hmm. Well, we'll have to start it in the next episode because this one's gone on long enough. Till then, I'm Chester44, also known as Fly. That is Aloy. This has been a Let's Play of Horizon Zero Dawn. And I shall see you all next time.